your girl Ash and I am back back with another video and today I'm going to be reacting to why Germany could not win World War II part two by Potential History. If you guys would like to check out part one, the link is going to be up there. Your girl is brushing up on her history, relearning, having so much fun. And if you guys haven't subscribed already, what are you waiting for? Hit that red button so you can be a part of the family. Don't forget to give your girl a thumbs up. Enough of me talking. Let's get straight into this reaction. This is a game. Excellent Metal work with the German Miss Pal. As to hoping better sources will be used in the future. This intro However, is dope. However, our intel has picked up reports of continued resistance in the comment sections. Mentions of Dunkirk and who not to invade seem widespread. We will be dropping you directly into the comment section with your primary objective being to root out these myths. Be cautious, though. Reports indicate that the wearables will be armed with Cold War era memoirs and David Irving books. Godspeed, Lieutenant. It's a nice intro. This video is brought to you by Dashlane. Stay secure online and never forget a password again. More on that later. So you may recall around six months ago, I made a video about how due to Germany's lacking in the population, industrial, and raw material sectors, they could not have pulled out a victory in the war they started in 1939. And it sort of got out of hand. I think we should read the comments. No. Kill yourself? Lord have mercy. Why did he read the comments? Sometimes it's just best not to read the comments. Or just ignore people. Because people are just miserable. I don't understand why... Um, that video wasn't it wasn't a bad video so why would people tell him to people are just miserable just like to have something to say behind the keyboard i don't know why he read the comments i don't know the other day as I was reading the comments section, the I found that along with some people agreeing with me, there were a lot of dissenting opinions of yet more ways that people thought the final victory could be achieved. And I am here today to respond to them. And also Germany didn't have any allies. They teamed up with Japan, right? But Japan and Germany didn't really have like the same goals they didn't have anything in common so how would germany win world war ii it just would have been impossible because you know they were running out of soldiers they were running out of resources um hitler was going mad even though he was already mad but he was going, more, he was becoming more madder and more madder. When I mean say mad, I mean like psycho, crazy, nervous, or whatever. I don't know. Um, but yeah. Probably clear up what I meant at the end of the last video, talking about limited use of alternative history. Here are a few more ways Germany could not have won World War II. Kill the British at Dunkirk. One thing I have seen brought up a few times is that if Hitler had not let the British Expeditionary Force get away at Dunkirk, that later the troops could not be used during Operation Overlord and thus no Western Front, with the implication that the German troops could have been sent east to stop the Soviets. This, however, has two problems. Firstly, the BEF was not simply allowed to leave France, as this narrative suggests. In Mein Kampf, Hitler does speak highly of the British at times and suggests that they could be a potential ally. But, but this is clearly without a strong grasp of British became, culture and political they didn't policy. Like each other. It was always discussed with Germany being above Britain and having them be administrators of the Reich, but only if they could shake their, quote, Jewish influence. Furthermore, he realized that Britain was against his intentions in the East and would become a barrier there. All this being said, by the time of the invasion of France, Britain was definitely an enemy and Hitler was doing them no favors. So then why Dunkirk? Well, this was an operational... F Hitler was just... He had enemies with everybody. Everybody. Failing, not a peaceful gesture. 
On May 15, 1940, the Germans broke through the French 2nd and 9th armies and steamed ahead night and day, thanks in part to some tablet boys, towards the coast. Although these gains were good for the Germans, the mechanized forces were quickly running out of supplies and were leaving their flanks exposed, which opened them to being cut off, the result of which could cause ruin for the German plans. It is at this point a nervous Hitler, being counseled by Generals von Kluge and von Rundstedt, gave a halt order to secure the flanks and allow the exhausted panzer divisions to refit. Check out this video by Mark Gerges for more. Upon the halt, our favorite drug-addled flyboy, Goering, promised the Luftwaffe could destroy the British at Dunkirk, and although he failed, I would hardly call the actions of the Luftwaffe just letting the British go. With thousands being killed, over 200 ships being sunk, over 100 planes shot down, and the loss of all the BEF's equipment, Hitler even realized that the halt was an error and resumed the attack while the oh, evacuation yeah. was underway, and it was only successful due to the brave French soldiers that held out until it was complete. But even if he had let them go, there are still more problems asserting that this means a German victory in the war. Britain had to rearm all the soldiers evacuated, which is a huge loss and took some time. This force when returned to England was not in any way ready to turn around and invade France, although the troop reserves were good to have if Germany decided to invade. But they were not in fighting condition for a long time. But most importantly, Britain is not the only nation present at D-Day. A combined landing force of American, British, and Canadian forces, along with smaller groups from other countries, landed and fought on the Western Front. Although the troop loss, if Dunkirk had failed, may have limited Britain's number of troops, the United States, having only mobilized about 9% of its population in the course of the war, could have very realistically filled in the gaps as it did in reality with the British equipment losses. But all of this still doesn't take into account where the real war is being fought, in the East. The German army will be decidedly on its back foot after Kursk, and the Soviets have massive offensives planned in 1944 regardless of what the Western Allies do. Would the defeat of Germany have taken longer without the Western Front opening? Of course it would. But by 1944, the Soviets have a decisive upper hand and will push the Germans back to Berlin. So to say the war could have been shifted if the British had 300,000 fewer troops ignores the reality of what the Germans were truly up against by 1944. So that's a clear war. This is another one I saw a lot. Just don't invade the Soviet Union, or just don't declare war on the United States. Americans could have won the war and invade the Soviet Union. Their allies could have won the war and invade the Soviet Union. Their allies, hmm, what if Germany was allies with America? What if they was allies? Probably wouldn't happen. Hitler didn't like anybody. States. And although these comments are puzzling on the surface, as removing a major combatant redefines what the war is and you are now describing how to win a smaller conflict, there are reasons this doesn't work that are all to do with character motivation and why these things were going to happen unless you fundamentally change who the Germans and Hitler were and then strain yeah. the fiction. Let's first start with the Soviet Union. If you read Mein Kampf, don't do it, it's not a very good book, or listen to a lot of Hitler's speeches, both in public and in private, he... I don't think Hitler really wanted to be allies with anyone. I don't even think he really wanted to be allies with Japan. But he just became allies with them. Um, because he really didn't have a choice, it seems. I, I, he... Fixates on this idea of Judeo-Bolshevism, which is a rather outdated term that grew out of the idea of a Jewish conspiracy that had created communism, and the two were the biggest evils facing the Aryan nation. There's a whole rabbit hole to go down here with multiple theorists and their ideas, but I'm not going to go into it here. But that's the basic idea, and Hitler subscribed to it. And the result of this is Hitler's main goal being to destroy the Soviet Union and become the savior of the Aryan people in his eyes. And in the process, wiping out millions of subhuman Slavs and resettle the land with Germans. Hitler saw this as his destiny, meaning he was going to do it at some point, and that this fictitious Hitler that would win World War II by not invading the East is just that, fiction. He ceases becoming the Hitler that we know and that existed, and now we're talking about a made-up story. Now, as to why the Soviet Union was invaded when it was comes down to two things, resources and, frankly, paranoia. Germany, as I outlined in my previous video on this, spent a lot of the war with fairly limited oil resources and knew that it couldn't support this attack any later than June of 41 with all the fuel that the battle over Britain was consuming. And even the trade yeah, with the so Soviet Union would not make up for this deficit. So the high command felt they had to go in when... Yeah, so they basically had to rush and go at war because if they wouldn't have, how was, there, how was they going to be able to... Um, 
Like, we don't know when the war would have started if it wouldn't have started um, when it started. Because, like he said, they had limited resources and they were low on oil. So, they had to attack then rather than wait. Because it probably would have been worse later because they would have been using the oil and the things that they already had left. They would probably have used it all. So... They did before the army would not be able to move as they needed to finish the campaign by September. Yeah. The time in which the high command figured the Soviet Union would collapse in on itself under the weight of the German attack. And I'll point you to David Stahill again for more information on that. The other aspect was, as I said, paranoia. I've often seen this assertion stated in a different way of don't break the alliance with the Soviet Union. Although I wouldn't even frame the... I want to read the comments. Hold on. Never should have double crossed Russia. Um, th three words, Berlin, Moscow, Alliance, I mean, Moscow. Another case, if Germany wasn't attacked, yeah. The alliance with the Soviet Union, although I wouldn't even frame the German-Soviet non-aggression pact as an alliance in the way you think of with the Axis and allies. The treaty was much more in the vein of, you don't get in our way, we won't get in your way, let's trade some stuff. And it was very uneasy at many points before and during its existence, becoming most volatile during combat between German and Soviet soldiers during the Poland campaign, after the Germans overran the territory that was designated as theirs and moved into territory promised to the Soviets that actually contained oil fields, making it not very subtle what the Germans were trying to do. Both Stalin and Hitler knew that some form of war was coming, just not when and who would start it, but going out of their way for the most part to not provoke it, and they didn't trust each other whatsoever. Now, I'm not implying any kind of Savorov preventative war type thing. The Soviet Union was refitting and probably wouldn't be ready for a large war until at least mid-1942, but with these two ideologically opposing powers, taking territory so quickly right next to each other, it was something that was bound to happen as soon as one of them felt they were in a position to make the first move. By 1941, the Germans felt they were, and they took the opportunity. For more on this, and the German-Soviet clashings in Poland, I'll point you towards Stephen Kotkin's second book in his Stalin series, or this video of him talking about it. The declaration of war on the U.S. is a bit more tricky, especially given that Hitler was aware of the industrial capacity of the nation. However, he saw the U.S. as very internally focused, and figured that it would take them much longer to mobilize than it did. Hitler always planned for war with the United States, it, as outlined in his second book, written but not published. And wasn't gonna work. He would. He would have. If he would have went to war with the United, how? 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 He would have to had win, or have won some type of war with the Soviet Union and the British. Wouldn't have. Wouldn't he? He would have had to win something. He didn't have that many resources. Or was this before... Before the war. Before he actually went to war with the Soviet Union. This is something that he thought about. Because he was losing a lot of soldiers. So how was he going to take on the states with no allies, just Germany? It, it probably would have been impossible, no? Comment down below, let me know. 1928, but wanted to put it off until he was ready, often skipping on details about how it would be done. He began to assume that, due to some anti-German sentiments from Roosevelt, the Americans would declare war in 1942 coming to the aid of the Allies like they did in World War I. Piggybacking off the previous statements about the Soviets, he figured he could end the war in the East and turn and fight the West. This feeling ended, though, as the Soviet campaign continued to drag on and 1942 loomed. The German Navy had been asking for war with the United States for some time, as Hitler had been holding them back to not provoke them, knowing that going against the U.S. Navy, the Kriegsmarine would come up lacking. Hitler's solution to this was Japan, which had a large navy that he thought could tie up the Americans until he was done in Russia, then turn westward and save his plan. He constantly reassured the Japanese that Germany would throw in with them if they expanded their territory south into U.S.-held islands. This was among many attempts to get Germany Germany and Japan to fight the same enemy, which also included trying to get Japan to invade the Soviet Union from the east in June. Although Japan kept Hitler in the dark as to when they were going to- Why would they do that? They don't have anything in common. Nothing at all. 
to attack. Hitler was very pleased when they did and immediately lifted all restrictions on his navy to attack U.S. ships and later declared war a few days later after his foreign minister, Joachim von Ribbentrop, said, a great power does not allow itself to be declared war upon. It declares war on others. Now, this decision may have been flawed with the hindsight of putting too much faith in the Japanese Navy and underestimating the U.S.'s ability to fight on two fronts and mobilize so quickly. But knowing that Hitler did plan to fight the U.S. way back in the 20s, the timing may be bad, given what we know now, but it was not something that he was just not going to do, in the same way he was not going to just opt out of invading the Soviet Union. Invade Great Britain. This is the one that I see the most. Take the British out before you turn east. As if it was that simple. The Germans tried this. First by attempting to bomb the British into submission, which didn't work. And second, by planning the invasion of the British home island in an operation named Sea Lion. This was going to be the amphibious assault that would take Britain out of the war, and plans were drawn up and early preparations were made. But before going through with it, the Germans themselves realized this wasn't going to work and canceled it. The short answer for why is the Royal Navy and the inability of the Kriegsmarine and Luftwaffe to control the channel. The German Navy would be unable to keep the channel clear of British warships to enable troops and supplies to reach the British coast unless the army's landing was on a very narrow front, resulting in less water needing to be covered. Knowing the coast was going to be heavily defended, the army rejected this plan as they would need a wide landing front so they were not just feeding men into a meat grinder. In short, the Germans did not have the material to carry out a successful landing without it either bogging down and being cut off on the ground or being simply sunk on the way to its destination. In the 70s, the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst wargamed the scenario with conditions favorable to the Germans and came up with the operation being a total failure. Some commenters have gone as far as to suggest using paratroopers to take the British down, but I think you need to only look as far as Crete and Arnhem to see how badly an unsupported airborne operation can go. The Germans would still have to land by sea to resupply them and get relief troops on the ground, and the Royal Navy was too large an obstacle to allow this to happen, even by the Germans' own admission. Conclusion and the end. One particular comment out of all of them really stood out to me. It began with, if the Nazis weren't Nazis, they would have won. And I think this really speaks to the core of my point. Alternative history is fun. It makes for good Hoi 4 games. But when really talking about it seriously, it's really hard to come by any academic conclusions outside of a few days of speculation. Because you begin building assumption on assumption on assumption, yeah. and before you know it, you have changed the motivations and decision-making patterns of everybody you're talking about. And you are then just writing fan fiction. This is your brain. This is your brain on alternative history. Would Germany have won World War II if the Nazis weren't in power? Maybe. But it's also equally likely they wouldn't have started the war, or joined the Allies, or anything else. If there's no basis in reality to do with the people you are talking about in your assumption, what's the point? Yeah, Germany decided to start a war that within a little over two years would see them taking on three superpowers at once with the resources of most of the world behind them. Add in strategic mistakes and intelligence failures, it paints a very grim There's picture no from the way. start, regardless of decisions made after the fact. Speaking of intelligence failures, don't let your private information go the way of the German armies. There are plenty of Alan Turing's out there looking for information and private data that do not have the same honor and duty to country that the original did. If you're like me, you probably forget and end up reusing your password for the sake of convenience. But when you do that, it's like using the same code books over and over. And if one password is cracked, all your accounts could be, including banking information. Then before you know it, all your personal information has been stolen and your glorious summer offensive is dead on arrival. Being someone who uses the internet for almost everything in life, it feels good to have that extra level of security that Dashlane provides. Dashlane can be your one-stop shop for your digital identity by managing all your passwords so you don't have to keep track of each one, personal info, and financials making your digital life safe and more secure. Dashlane works across all devices including all Apple products, PCs, Android, Safari, and Chrome. Dashlane also has a secure autofill feature that works for personal information and credit cards, saving you time when shopping online, a VPN to prevent prying eyes from tracking you, and dark web monitoring to see if your information is being bought and sold illegally. To give it a try for free, go to dashlane.com slash potential history and use my promo code potential history to get 10% off if you want to upgrade to premium i would like to thank my patrons on patreon a lot of them were very yeah i don't know i don't know why people get so butthurt um about what he was saying i don't think that he said anything wrong comment down below and let me know if you feel as if um his um, his video is incorrect. I mean, you know, some people are extreme. Telling the man to actually, like, go... That's just crazy. I don't know. I don't think he said anything wrong. Um, I don't see how they could have won just by themselves. Like, there's just no way 
you know, there's no way they would have won the war um, going up against all those other countries. It just would have been impossible. But comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Give your girl a thumbs up. Share. All of that good stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.